uh, for Joseph. He and his family will move into one of the old houses from when the land was known as what? Venus. Look at you guys. You're so smart. Okay, for Joseph, however, and his people, for Joseph, he only lived uh, in that house for two weeks the first summer. And the reason is everyone is getting sick. His house becomes the hospital, and he moves Emma and the children out into a tent on the front lawn. What was it like living in commerce? Commerce was death and dying for the Latter-day Saints. Many of them will write in their journals, they wish they were back living in Missouri, that in old Missouri that they could, uh, you know, at least they could see the sheen of the sword and the musket, but they were sick and they didn't know what they had. There was so much death and dying that you've got 1,800 Latter-day Saints die that first year. Most of them will die during the summer months. That's when you're going to get malaria. Everybody could survive the cold, Vanessa. Everybody could survive cold. They just couldn't uh, survive this summer out there in the swamps. Well, okay. For Joseph Smith, in uh, one of these burial yards, he will introduce baptisms for the dead. And as he does that at a funeral, his conclusion is, I changed the name of this town to a new name. It's going to be called Nauvoo which is a Hebrew word, my great friend Marvin. It is a Hebrew word meaning a, a beautiful situation. And the saints began to drain the swamp. Well, Nabu was born. Uh, many of you that have seen it, I, I know you love it. And uh, so, as it's born, it moves forward. And uh, you'd say the average person, while well, Joseph was alive, is still living in a log uh, cabin, a lean-to, a block house, uh, but definitely not your brick home. When Joseph died on June 27, 1844 at Carthage, the big question was, who takes over? Well, our answer is Brigham Young. Brigham Young stood 5 feet 10. He had red hair and freckles and the temperament that goes with that kind of look. And uh, Brigham Young he knew something really important. He does the most unusual dichotomy in the whole United States. For uh, Brigham Young, he knows that Joseph Smith has prophesied that the saints would continue to suffer much. Don't you love those kind of prophecies? Okay. The saints would continue to suffer much affliction and would be driven to the Rocky Mountains. But as much as he knows that and plans to carry that out. Oh, wait a minute. Go the wrong way. Okay, he also knows that Joseph has prophesied that Nauvoo will be a light unto what? The world. Light unto the world. He announces to the saints, we are going west, but before we go west, I want you to build your memory of Joseph Smith. Now, where do you get the brick town that you go back to Nauvoo and see? Not during Joseph's lifetime. You're going to get it during Brigham Young's lifetime. And the reason is, he says, build your memory of Joseph Smith. Now, I like my house, okay, but if I were building my memory of Joseph Smith, I'd have to buy out all my neighbors. You'd say there's Hertz Castle, and then there's what she did. And so uh, you get uh, people now uh, doing their brick houses. And, uh, well, okay, Nauvoo transforms. And as it transforms, let me just do a Wilford Woodruff at one point. Wilfred Woodruff goes out to the John Benbow farm. He had a much more famous farm in England. But he goes out to the John Benbow farm in Nauvoo. And, and Wilfred, as he's walking out there, he finds Brother Benbow. And he says, Brother Benbow, he said, I, I don't even think the Garden of Eden could be as beautiful as I now see your farm today. And Brother Benbow said, uh, well, thank you, Wilfred. I've just dedicated my farm as my memory of Joseph Smith. So farm, barn, shop, house, everything. In fact, in this house, Wilfred, as he's uh, loading up a wagon to go west, he's taking out a table. He drops the table. It makes a dent on the floor. He says to his wife, I can't leave yet. He then goes, uh, he gets new wood. He stains new wood. He tries to make it. He doesn't really know if it's dry, but he covers it over with the carpet. 
He then walks out of his house and leaves his front door open, and his wife goes, hey, what are you doing? And he said, someday someone may know that Wilfred Woodruff lived here, and I need to leave my memory of Joseph perfect. So that's Nauvoo. That's Nauvoo, city of Joseph. 